What up, y'all? How are y'all today? How are y'all today? So, I'm super excited. As you know, today is Tuesday. Um, and for anybody who watches these videos, I'm like, Belise, why do you say what day? I like to tell y'all what day it is. I don't know why. But I like to tell y'all what day it is. But... Today is an educational day. Every educational day. We have them on Tuesdays and we have them on Fridays. I want to tell everybody, first time watching me, welcome, welcome. My name is Belise Fivey. I am known as the ST Life Coach and this year I'm the Living Beyond Herpes Queen. So I'm going to teach you how to live beyond herpes. Um, so because the last couple of years, well the last five years, I've been teaching you guys how to live over the stigma. I believe y'all got that. So now I'm going to teach you how to live because a lot of you guys are over the stigma but you're falling back to the stigma because you're not living your life. So today I am going to talk about the stats of my Mexican American sisters, y'all. So I'm really excited about this one um, because at the end of the day, I have not stepped away from African American women much. Um, number one, because I am African American, and then number two, because we're the high risk, okay? Y'all know I just tell most information, but I want to do something different because number one is women's. Um, Women's Month, but also I feel like it's needed that we talk about all stats because if we don't talk about all stats Then sometimes you don't feel like I'm talking to you and I don't want you to mm -mm, I don't want baby. Thank you. Um, and I don't want you to feel like I'm not talking to you. So y'all know last video you can see up here. Um, I gave the black women's um, <coughs> Sorry stats. So today I'm giving Mexican Americans um, And you may ask why ethnic Americans because when I did my research they said Mexican American So if you fall within this um, I was trying to look for Hispanic, but I couldn't find anything that was broad enough um, So this is Mexican American which I kind of like, and I don't like to say, to put together, but it's closer to what Hispanic um, numbers would be, but it's not really clear. So this is what I could find. Guys, this is what I can find, and I suggest if you are Mexican or Hispanic, that you also do your own stats. Make sure you know your stats. Also, make, no, make sure you know the stats of the individuals that you're being sexually um, um, involved with because at the end of the day that tells you a lot now as I told y'all before I don't really like stats because it's based off a certain amount of people which is between a hundred to a thousand that's it so and they also pick where, where they live they also pick um, their education they pick their age they pick all of this stuff so sometimes you may not even fall within that demographic of people but the stats are based are given to you like it's your demographic and it's not so really don't I, I don't love stats but I have to tell us this so then we're aware of what the stats are so we can make make it our business to change them okay so Mexican Americans you um women with herpes women with type 2 herpes is 13.2 percent 13.2 percent for men type 2 is 7.5 percent now interestingly I was able to find a number for men and that was kind of like I Black men, I wasn't able to find. I think it was 30%, but I think I don't think that's very accurate. Um, but here, with Mexican Americans with type 2, and it's all these stats are type 2. They're not including type 1 because they don't believe type 1 is herpes, which is a freaking lie from the pit. Um, that's not true. So they're not really doing any stats on that, which that needs to ooh, that needs to change, y'all. That needs to change because if we knew how many people have type 1. And the stats on type 1, we will start looking at herpes a tad bit different. But right now, we're only looking at type 2. And still, these numbers are not the best. Okay? So, women is 13.2%. Men is 7.5%. Now, this is the reason they say um, they're at risk. They said their greatest is um, their greatest risk is unemployment, runaways, school dropouts, and experience of sexual risk. And that's abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, and drug abuse. Now, I'm going to keep it real real with y'all. Um, with the information I do know about many Mexicans that do move in the United States, they are immigrants, okay? They come over here, they're not, um, well, they're not immigrants. They're, anyway, they're not legal, okay? You know, and I hate that because at the end of the day, I feel like you come over here, you want a better opportunity, but they make it very hard. I know many people who had to go through the process for immigration, it took them forever. It cost them a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. It took four, five, six, seven years. After a while, doing all that fight, you might as well be here, find a job under the table, and do what you do. Now, don't take it personal, but I just that's how I feel because... 
the United States make it really, really hard for individuals who don't live here to become Americans. They make it so, 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 so hard. And that's because they really don't want y'all here. And that's sad because at the end of the day, let's keep it very much real. They dragged everybody here. They This is not their land, okay? So, honestly, they didn't go through the stupid process they put other people through because they did this did not belong to anybody but uh, Native Americans. Uh, okay! Um... But they're saying basically it's because of unemployment, runaways, school dropout, experience of sexual abuse of some sort, physical abuse, drug abuse, of things of that nature. So interestingly, when I was doing my research, a lot of what um, Mexican Americans deal with pertaining to the sexual and the physical abuse also falls within the black um, black women as well. Um, and they also wanted to say something about. Um, sexual behavior which I don't like anybody talking about nobody's sexual behavior because you cannot group a, a hundred to a thousand people and say everybody's sexual behavior is the same and also it depends on uh, income status it depends on so much other stuff on what people are exposed to what's going on in their households I, I don't like that I really don't because I don't care what nobody say um, sexual abuse happens in all races white black Hispanic it doesn't matter. It happens in all races. If you look at any culture and look into their history, sexual abuse is real. Physical abuse is real. Verbal, uh, verbal abuse is real. Mental abuse is real. It's, it, it's across the board. It's across the board. So I don't really like when stats want to say sexual behavior is the reason why their numbers, STI, numbers look a certain way. No, 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 no. I don't want to blame it on that. I feel like it's because of the lack of education. Because... Especially for my um, Mexican Americans, which I'm learning just talking to people and getting to know people and knowing other people who are in the community. I'm learning a lot of them, there a lot of their children end up have to come home because their parents do not speak English, so they have to come from school and stay home, or they have to get jobs and things like that to help family or send money back home and things like that. So they lack the the resources they need to learn about sexual education. Um, also, they're not offering them enough information in their communities. Okay, so their communities are not getting funding. Like they should. Their schools are not being funded like they should. Many of their teachers don't even freaking speak in um speak Spanish. So that makes it it's a um it's a language barrier. So it's so many things where I feel like, you know, I don't think these numbers are fair either, because if you're not offering them the if you're not putting the resources there for them to understand the resource also within their language, then you're you're not doing them any good. You're not doing them any good. If you're not treating them like humans, you're not doing them any good. Like at all, like I just, like that. I'm not a lot of stats bother my soul because I was like that. That's not fair, like because I already know how they're being treated here in the United States. So that's not fair. It's not fair. They're the like literally Mexicans and African Americans are very very disadvantaged, like at all. Because at the end of the day, they're not offering us the proper education. They're not offering the resources in our health departments like we need. Um, people in our health departments are nasty sometimes. I mean, nasty attitudes. That's what they have to. You gotta you gotta have a nasty attitude to work there, like for real. The nurses are disgusting. Okay, sometimes they literally treat you like dirt. It's like they 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 pick the most judgmental people in the world. I don't know where they find these folks. They are not qualified. I don't I don't understand it. I do not understand how they qualify some of these people to work in the health industry. And how do how are you judgmental? You in the health industry? I just what makes you special? You're no different. It happened to you. I know. I know because I talked to many doctors. I talked to many uh, nurses who are literally. Piss that they went all the way through school, been nurses for 10 plus years, and didn't know anything about herpes. Don't be judgmental. It will be you one day if you keep on. Okay? Keep on having sex, you're at risk. That just comes with it. So, that's just the stats I was able to find. I wasn't able to find uh, a lot. Um, but that's what I was able to find, and it's disheartening. I'm just going to lie. It's, it's very disheartening to read these stats because I feel like at the end of the day, their numbers are looking like this just because they lack resources. Same for African American women. We lack resources. We're still being suppressed. Same as well. They're being suppressed. So that's not fair. It's not fair at all. So look out. I'm still moving. The next ones, y'all know. I love my Caucasian sisters, but I'm coming for y'all. And I, I don't even feel in y'all stats either. Because 
I don't believe it's the truth either. Once again, none of these numbers are right. I don't care what nobody say. None of these numbers are right. Try me if you want to. I don't care. I, I don't been. I don't have my bachelor's. I don't have my master's. And all my master's well with nothing but statistics. I'm in my doctor's. Ain't nothing but statistics. I'm about to take statistics. This I hate statistics because it's bull. It's bull crap. It's research. Somebody going to school, which is half the time their dissertation. They're going to school and doing research on a certain amount of number. They can't do it on the world. And I, I really want us to keep, I want us to get that. We, I, I need us to get that, that these numbers are so skewed. Because at the end of the day, you cannot, everybody's not going to participate in a research project. They're just not. And then sometimes we are put in research projects and we don't realize it because if you're going to your, if you're going to public health services, they have to send all your numbers to the CDC. And they also have to send all their numbers to their regional director every year to see what the numbers are. I know because I know the regional director in, um, in Atlanta. Michelle is the bomb, okay? And the numbers hurt your feelings because you're like, okay, most people who go to the health department lack funding. They lack Finances, they lack resources, they lack education. Not everybody, okay? I'm not going to say that. But many do. That's why they go that route. And now you're using their numbers to judge them in a sense. And I don't like that because they're lacking things that you're not offering. Okay? So that's what I have to say. Um, I hope that helped y'all. Share that with individuals um, to help them as well. I'm doing something different, guys. We got to talk about these stats. But just to let you guys know, remember... Virtual meet and greet is next week, y'all. Next week. Y'all ain't got y'all tickets. Y'all playing. Y'all playing. It's okay. It's okay. It, it's okay. I ain't even gonna trip. I love you, though. I love you, though. But we will have another one. If you missed this one, it'll be another one in October, close to Herpes Awareness Day. So look out for that information for that one. But get your ticket, $25, swag bags, all that. Because, y'all, I can't sing your swag bag. The HB Gone Spray. Um... The power kit and also the bundle. Remember, I only have three bundles left. I only have three uh, kits left. I only have three speed up creams left. Because when the speed up cream gone, it's going to take the bundle away and it's going to take the um, um, power kit away. So I only have three of those left. Um, I still have a whole lot of itch be gone. So you still got some chance to get that. Um, I have a bunch of samples, uh, small speed up creams. I have those. Um, I have a lot of tea, so if you want tea, so like I told you guys, when the big stuff is gone, it's gone, it's not going to come back into April, so if you think you're going to have an outbreak or you're running low on your products, you may want to go ahead and get your products, because I'm doing a re, um, a, a rebranding on all the products and things of that nature, so look out for that, I'm super excited about that, um, and that's going to be an STD month, it's April, so I'm super excited about STD month, um, also if you need to talk to me if you still are dealing with depression if you're still suicidal if you still feel like the whole world's going to reject you if you feel nasty disgusting if you're still dealing with the, with the stigma any of that if you still got fear you need to talk to me it's no if ands buts it's no reason you're not booking a session you need to book a session so we can talk if you're in atlanta area i'm ready to start meeting y'all in atlanta if you're in atlanta area do your office visits no excuse. Do an office visit. Let's meet. Let's meet. Let's meet. Let's talk. Let's get you on the roll. You should not feel like this over a year. If you do, that means you have not seeked out help. Okay? You have not seeked out help. And no reason if you're watching me, you've been watching me for over a year, and you have not reached out to me. Okay? You have not done a session. If you have not, I'm calling you out. Y'all all, I got 18,000 people. I have not talked to 18,000 people. That means it's a lot of you guys. I can tell you, I only talked to about 500 last year. Probably 500 in all the years that I don't talk, like literally on sessions. That lets me know half of y'all are sitting out here and struggling for no reason. Oh, but at least the, the videos are enough. I know you. I love you. No, it ain't. You need to talk to somebody. Because that's why you keep fighting. You keep fighting. Because you need to talk to a human being. Talk therapy works, y'all. I don't know why y'all don't think it does. It really works. Listen, talk to somebody who get it. I love y'all. I ain't against therapy. Listen, I love therapists, mental health therapists, but I'm telling you, if you're still going to a therapist and you still you're going to a therapist and have not told your therapist your status, you're doing your you're doing therapy a dis you're you're pointless. It's pointless. Literally, it's pointless. If you cannot tell your therapist you have herpes, come to me.
Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm being real. Come to me, y'all. Because at the end of the day, you're doing yourself a di You went in there for herpes, and you're not telling them that you have it because you think they're going to judge you. Then don't go to a therapist. Come to believe me. I'm a life coach. Y'all know I'm in school to be a therapist. So, so with that being said, I got the background. I know what they're going to talk to you about. But you need relatability. And I love you. You ain't going to always get that in therapy because they can't. They can't tell you their business. It's not about them. So book me. Let me help you. I ain't telling you to leave a therapist because some of y'all need to stay in therapy, especially if you're dealing with, you know, um, major depression, suicide, things like that. You need so, I'm not telling you to leave therapy. I don't want you to. But I do want you to get somewhere that you can get help, which I can assist you if you allow me to. Okay? And a lot of you guys are running from real help. And I know this sounds so crazy, but I can call y'all all on this. A lot of you guys are going places that you know you're really not going to get help because you know you really don't want to get help yet. You really think you can do this thing on your own and you're thinking, oh, well, I, I did what they told me to do is go to therapy. But if you're not telling your therapist what you're really in therapy for, they ain't going to help you, baby. There is, listen, they can, they don't know what you're fully there for if you don't tell it. They can say, we, I can feel like it's something more. But if you don't want to tell it because you're scared to be judged, then what are you there for? I love you. You're wasting your time. Stop wasting your time and get help. Stop wasting your time and get support. Get the real support you need. I'm just calling y'all out because I know that's what y'all do. I know I talk to people in my group all the time. I went to therapy, but you're still in a group telling me that you want to kill yourself. Your therapy is not working. Because you're not telling your therapist what's going on. It's not helping you. You're just in that room for 30 to an hour for no reason. You're spending money for no reason. You're paying a copay for no reason. Why? I'm just keeping it real. Why? You might as well come and get some real help from somebody who gets it. You don't feel judged by it. You know her story. You know how she got through it. And you can see her. And she's touchable. And I don't have to write everything I hear you say down. I can keep it real with you. I can call you out on your mess. I have that ability. All right? So I love you guys. Um, you know where to find all this information. It's all below. And I will see you guys on Thursday for the live at 10 p.m. Easter. Come on and talk to me. And then Friday we'll be back here for a um, another educational video. So I love you guys and see you soon. This is